well, you know, I see these things and I love how they have the, the, the furniture from the past back there in the back sometimes. Um, just saying they respect me or respect what I did. Um, a lot of my kitchens, although they were what would be considered military kitchens, but really just people kitchens pretty much. Um, a lot of my places, I would build places, as you know. Excuse me. And a lot of those places, um, they would make food. Um, my time goes back to when there really wasn't a lot of food, or at least I didn't know about a lot of food. And so I asked my people to, I wanted to give the world food at one point in time. So I was funding cooks, funding and having furniture built for them, funding cooking wear, and some of them I gave silver cooking wear to, I believe, because it didn't rust. Uh, before we had stainless steel, we had silver, I believe. And so they got silver cooking wear. And, um, you know, the knives and stuff, pierced, or very, very good silver. Although it dulled easy, so we had to work on that. And it... It was probably the basis for the, I believe the, the company that I was working with basically became Ginsu Knives or whatever. It's the leading world-renowned knife maker because I wanted to make the perfect knife and I was willing to pay for it. Um, and a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of the things that the world has, um, like the, the ancient Chinese and Japanese cooking uh, recipes were developed, you know, because I was paying for it a lot of American I I wanted to, I liked I wanted to give the world authentic food so they um, they worked with me and we gave the world food um, I gave the world a lot of things ice rings and everything and it meant a lot to me and it meant something to them um, and later on it meant a lot to their children um, and it's part of my past that, um, and I treated these people, I think, pretty well because, like, I gave them full kitchens. Um, it's basically kind of like a test kitchen, you might think, but these people were paid and given, like, knives and um, everything a, a cook could ever want, basically. And there were a couple of them, I think, and they were set up, and the people would just research how to make things like the perfect noodles, the perfect this, the perfect that, just to try and see what they could come up with. And this is way back when, I'm pretty sure. Um, and is another reason why there's so much food in the world is I had them in ancient times working on how to feed the population as well as how to make something truly special. And, um, <laughs> and it's something that you have to look in the um, in what is a really old ancient text for a recipe to actually see when or where I started it. But I was paying them to to give the world food, and they did. They um, they figured out how to you know what plants to, to to they figured out how to make noodles, how to make everything. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how much food we had back then, but um, or what was available to the world. But I was paying for them to find new things that could be eaten and would and how to make them taste good if they weren't didn't taste good and all this and that like um, noodles and just everything, even clams, fish, how to eat fish safely, um, <laughs> all the food basically. Um, I paid money for um, and gave them silverware and basically a, a proper kitchen. Um, at one point I was like, I want to give them a proper kitchen. So a proper kitchen was given to them and um, uh, made in, I believe, one of my wood shops or, you know, and then they made them nicer as, as things went on. So um, the first knives might have been cast iron, but then, you know, we got, uh, you know, um, uh, silver cooking ware and then stainless steel. So anyway, um, I love my people and um, 
I'm glad I'm I was always glad that I could play play such a big part, such a big role in in humanity and and in what is life. Um or what is, you know, good food, good experiences, good everything. Um and it cost a lot of money, I guess, and took a long time or took a while, but we did it. 